Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a globe illustration in Illustrator and we're going to be focusing on how we get the lines of latitude and longitude. Before we begin, however, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 200 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically my offer is even better. I also have Illustrator training at udemy.com, and there's a referral link for each of these courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family and friends. Before we head over to Illustrator, I just want to show you the options that we're going to have for making globes. And for this, I've just gone to iStock. And the reason for this is that a lot of the globe icons that you see around, the lines of latitude, these ones that go around the globe, are actually incorrectly drawn. They should theoretically be bent the opposite direction. But a lot of people design using the lines going the other way, I think just simply because they look more interesting. But we're going to do both so that you'll learn to do them the wrong way and the right way, just in case you want to create, say, logos that look a little bit like this. But I just think it's fair to point out to you that these should not be bent this way, they should actually be bent the other way. So back to Illustrator, I've just got a standard screen size document open here. I've got the default settings here for fill and stroke. I'm going to start with a circle. So I'm going to the ellipse tool. I'll hold the shift key as I drag out a circle. Now I don't want it to have a fill at this stage. So I'll turn the fill off and let's increase the stroke to about 15 points so that we have a good decent size line. So we're going to look first at creating the lines of latitude that go around the globe. For this, I'm going to tuck a duplicate of this circle away just so that we've got access to it later on in case we need it. So here in the layers panel, let me just make things a bit larger. So here in the layers panel is our ellipse. I'm going to drag a duplicate of that into the panel here. I'm just going to lock it down and turn it off. So it's there, but we're not going to have it in our way. So for the first set of lines of latitude, we're going to the line segment tool. So I'm just going to select that. I'll hold the shift key as I drag a line and I need a fairly hefty sort of line extending well beyond the edge of this circle. Now it's defaulted to the same stroke width as the stroke around the circle and that's really good. It's just going to look better that way. So once I've got this line down, I'm going to the selection tool. I'm going to hold the Alt key on a PC option on a Mac and just drag a duplicate of that line away. And I'm sort of looking at the separation at this stage. Having done that, I'll press Control or Command D. Now I've got two lines already. I need an uneven amount of lines. That's really important if you want a line to go centrally through the globe, effectively your equator. So I'm going to press Control D another three or five times. For this one, I've chosen five. You might get better results with three. I just want some even spacing here. And as I said, I do want uneven numbers. I'm going to select over all of these lines and I'm going to group them with object and then group. That means they're going to travel as a group. Now, because I'm going to do my lines both ways, bending upwards and bending downwards, let's go and grab a duplicate of this group as well. And we'll just tuck it away. I'm going to lock it down and turn its visibility off so that we've got another set we can use in just a minute. But we're going to focus on this group for now. Now, probably the easiest way to bend these lines is to use a distortion effect. So with our group selected, I'll choose Object and then Envelope Distort and Make with Warp. Now, as you can see, I've already been fiddling around with this. So let's go and do the bend downwards versions first. And this is, of course, the one that is not functionally correct, but it's used quite a lot. So we're going to look at it. So for the style, I've chosen squeeze. But of course, we don't want to squeeze it like an apple. We want to squeeze it from the top and the bottom. And so what I've done is I've chosen vertical. The default is horizontal. And you can see that this is giving us this sort of apple style squeeze. Well, you know, a chewed up apple, if you like where somebody's just got the core left. Well, we're going for vertical and we're going to increase the value quite high so that we get a good bend. 
For the distortion, horizontal and vertical, you just want zero. So I'll just click OK. Now this group is still selected. So what I want to do first of all is to shorten these. So I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key and just drag in on this. And what that does is it leaves it positioned where it is in the middle, but it's just bringing the outer edges in. And then we're going to do the, exactly the same in a vertical direction. Again, hold Alt or Option and drag up because we want the lines to be positioned over our globe. And you can see that this is a pretty good result that we've got here. If you want to, you could still come in a bit further on the outside just so you get nice bendy bits. Now that we've got this, we're going to expand it. So I've got an envelope distort here and for us to do anything with it, we're going to need to expand it. So with it selected, we'll go up to object and then back down to envelope distort and we'll choose expand. And that very simply just breaks it out into a group and inside that group are individual lines. It's a very simple sort of transformation. It doesn't give you anything that's sort of difficult to manage or magical in any way. So now that we've got here, what we need to do is to get rid of the outside lines. Now, if you've watched my previous video on lines and cutting them in Illustrator, you'll know exactly what we're about to do. I'm going to select my ellipse and I'm going to select my group. So just clicking on the ellipse and then shift clicking on the group. So just these objects are selected. We'll go over here to the Shape Builder tool and then hold down the Alt or Option key as I just drag over the lines that I don't want. That hasn't done anything to the ellipse. You'll see that the ellipse is still here and it's still intact. What it's done is simply shorten the lines that are in this group. Now, this group's nested a couple deep. So there's a group inside a group. We don't actually need that second group. So let's go and grab this and we'll just choose Object Ungroup. So leaving those lines in just a single group is just fine. It makes better sense, but they don't have to be groups inside groups. So there are the set of latitude lines that are bent the wrong way. This is not the way the globe looks. Let's go and create the ones that are technically correct. So let's just turn visibility off of that set of lines. Let's go and turn visibility on of our second set that we just kept to one side. We'll go and select that group. And this time we're going to do exactly the same with an envelope distort, but we're going to bulge it. So we'll choose Object, Envelope, Distort and Make with Warp. Instead of Squeeze, we're going to choose Bulge. And here you can see that the vertical is set and of course that's incorrect. It should be a horizontal bulge and it's probably a bit much. So I'm just going to bring that down. So I've got nice bendy lines, but they're not overly bent. Of course, we've got zero on horizontal and vertical distortion because we don't want these distorted. We just want them to be bent. So I'll click OK. I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so I can see things a little bit more clearly. Again, go and select this envelope distorted shape. Hold the Alt or Option key so that we're going to scale it from the middle. And I'm just going to bring it in to approximately where I want it to be. I'm also going to bring in the edges here. So again, selecting it, Alt or Option, drag inwards so that we get these nice bent lines. Now I want this to be aligned exactly. So I'm going to select both my circle and my group of lines and I'm going to align them. So I'm going to choose Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center. That just makes sure that this line is going right through the middle of my shape. And again, we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did with the previous set of lines. Firstly, I need to break the lines out of this envelope distortion. So we'll go Object, Envelope, Distort and we'll expand it. Then I'll select the group of objects and the circle. So shift click on this ellipse. So I've got everything selected. Go to our Shape Builder tool. Hold the Alt or Option key as I just drag over these lines down the outside. They're the ones I don't want. Leaving behind just the ones that I do. 
Now in this instance, because of the bend on the lines, you'll see that the lines are actually extending past the edge of the circle. So for this particular globe, we're going to need to enlarge the globe a little bit or shrink the lines. It's probably going to be easier to enlarge the globe. So I'm going to take a duplicate of this ellipse because I want to keep the version that goes with the group that we already have created. So I'm going to drag one up there and just lock it down and turn it off. In fact, it's probably better still if I make an entirely new layer and put these particular objects on that new layer and just hide it so that this layer that we're working on here just has this set of lines and this ellipse as well as a duplicate of the ellipse that we might need later on. So let's just go and enlarge this slightly. Grab hold of its corner handle and make sure you have Shift and Alt both held down. And you just want to enlarge it a little bit, just the littlest bit to cover over those pointy edges. So having done that, this is our new ellipse. And if we need to use this ellipse to create any shapes, then we're going to need to use this one, not this one, because there's a difference in sizes. So now that we've got the lines of latitude, the ones that go around the globe, let's have a look at the longitude, the ones that go up and down. For this, I'm going to take a duplicate of this ellipse. Now we do the exact same process for the globe that had the lines in the other direction. So I'm only going to do this once and I'm working on the set that we're currently looking at. So I'm going to take this ellipse and I'm just going to drag it onto the new icon and just lock down and hide a duplicate just in case we need that for any reason. And we're going to work on this ellipse. And for now, I can also get rid of those lines. I can just hide those and lock those down. Now for this ellipse, what we need to do is to break it in half. So with it selected, I'm going to the Direct Selection tool here, and I'm clicking on just this one point over here, and I'll press Delete. And that breaks it so that we've got just half of an ellipse. What we do next is to flip this. So I'm going to select this. I'll choose Object Transform and then Reflect. And we're going to reflect over the vertical here. Now I'm going to click Copy because I want this one plus the original. So if I click Copy, I've got both pieces. And then I'll start to move this duplicate out of the way. And what we need to do is to put it exactly over the edge so it joins back up, making a full circle. But in this case, our circle is made up of two paths. And that's critical because this is not going to work unless you do it that way. Next up, we'll select over both of these shapes. And we'll choose Object and then Blend and Make. And what that does is it makes a blend. Now your blend may not look like this and it's fine. It doesn't have to look like this. You just have to start making your blend and you'll see the word blend appear here in the layers panel. So you'll go over here to the blend tool and you'll double click on it. Turn preview on so you can see what you're doing. And instead of smooth color, you're going to choose specified steps. And then you'll start increasing or decreasing the steps because what you need to do is to make your lines of longitude. And as you can see, every time I press the up arrow key, I'm increasing the number and I'm getting more lines in my blend. Now you can determine if you use an even number, you're going to get this sort of bendy bit in the middle. If you use an odd number, you'll have a line of longitude that goes right down the middle of your shape. I happen to like the one that has this sort of gap. So for me, it's going to be four or six, but not five. I think I'll go for six because I think that's going to match this one a little bit better. So I'll just click OK. And then we can go and turn back on our lines of latitude. Now you can see that we've got a slight sizing issue here again. Now the sizing issue you might think would be solved if we used the original ellipse. But when we do that, you'll see that it's out as well. So we need to do one of two things. Either we need to make our blend a little bit smaller or we need to make our lines a little bit bigger. And Quite frankly, lines a bit bigger is going to be the easier of the two. So let's go and grab the lines. Let's go to the selection tool and holding the Alt or Option key, let's just nudge this out a little bit so that we get rid of those joins. 
at this point if some of the lines are still a little short I've got all of these are looking fine these at the top and the bottom are not then I'm going into the group I'm going to open up the group and I'm going to locate these two lines I think this is one of them here and I'm going to make it just a little bit wider so we don't need to make the others any wider because they're already wide enough and this is going to be the other one that needs a little bit of attention again just adjusting it marginally so there's one completed globe with the correct bend for the lines of latitude and of course the lines of longitude are going to be the same for either of these designs once you've completed this you could take a copy of this blend and put it up with this other set of bends and we're going to do that but before we do let's just break out the shapes from this blend because right now this is a blend it would be better if we broke out the individual lines so we'll choose object and then blend and choose expand and then if we have a look here we've got individual lines I'll make a duplicate of this drag it onto the new icon let's grab this and drop it into this layer up here I'm going to turn off this layer and lock it down and let's turn back on this layer here and there's some elements in here that are not visible So here we've got our lines of latitude that are of course bent the wrong way but it's still an attractive look and we've got our blend that's making this set of lines of longitude. Again we've got things missing here the easiest way of fixing this is going to be fixing individual lines so let's go to this group let's unlock it open it up and target the lines that need fixing well this is one of the ones that needs fixing and I think it's probably going to be this one here make sure that when you adjust it you're holding the alt or option key as you drag it out because if you don't hold alt or option you'll just be dragging one end of it if you want to be able to make a selection of these lines on the actual image you'll see that right now if I use the selection tool and click on any of these lines I'm selecting the entire group of lines well there is a tool in here underneath the direct selection tool called the group selection tool provided you've got nothing selected you can come in and just click on a line so it makes things a little bit easier when you're trying to select lines for example that are inside groups so there are two ways of making your globe the functionally correct way which we saw earlier and this not so correct way but one which is a pretty attractive sort of rendering for a globe I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope that you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released and until next time I'm Helen Bradley thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel